So here we are, the keel is separated. I used to have a keel boat, now I have a keel and a boat. It took one day, but um, I have to admit the preparations took at least twice as much time as uh, the separation progress itself. So the boat is standing on these red card jack stands, which bear six tons each. The hull is supported from the front and from the back and then just these four supports one in each corner and I put some timbers between the keel and the hull just for the security reasons because the keel itself is now dropped to the ground or onto these timbers so it's it's firm and secure. The part which worries me the most is this strange filler. It's like concrete, it got moist here because there was some water in the bilge and, and it came out. I, I think I will grind it few millimeters and then fill the, the holes with epoxy filler. These surfaces are not so bad. I will grind off some old material and put some new but in general it looks okay. Also, the upper surface is not so bad. Here you can see the top side of the keel has been filled with some resin mix, probably to make it level. But this has come loose in many places, so I have to remove all this stuff. It comes off in big chunks quite easily just do the hammer and the chisel and once it has been removed the top side has to be cleaned and um, and I have to put on a new filler probably epoxy resin the problem is that the weather is getting cold it's like plus 10 celsius so it's not the best temperature to work with epoxy anymore meanwhile i clean the top surface of the keel most of uh, the old filler came uh, off easily but uh, in some parts it was pretty stuck i've opened the cavities where the lower nuts of the keel bolts are located and these were full of water. I used this multi-tool cutter. To cut these plugs out and, and I found that the builder has used some um, stones, like granite. They are very hard and when the blade hits the, the stone, it's, it's toast immediately. I went through many blades to cut these slots open. Hello, hello, hello. A few days have passed and, um, and we have not much progress. What I've done, I've coated the top of the keel with epoxy. I filled these big voids in this concrete part. Also with epoxy mixed with some thickener. What I found out, I found out the reason why the keel didn't want to drop 
it's very simple. If you look at the keel bolts, they are all at a different angle. And um, of course, there was a huge friction when I tried to drop the keel. And now I'm facing the problem. I just tried to test fit just to drop the hull onto the keel again and of course the bolt holes don't align because every bolt is at a different angle and I have two options now first one first option would be to drill the holes bigger put the keel back and then uh, fill the oversized holes with uh, some epoxy mix, resin mix. The second option would be that what it looks to me the first and, uh, and the rare most uh, keel bolt are at the same angle. So if I could remove the other bolts, then I can just later fit them back when the keel is in place. Then I can put the bolts back from uh, inside the hull. To drill the holes bigger is also not so easy as it uh, looks because inside the hull there are backing plates which are laminated into the hull and they they go like from one side to another and then they stretch up somewhere I don't know how far so no easy solution anyway so just a quick update today I'm going to drop the hull onto the keel again and um, the purpose of this is to uh, to make the surfaces even because the surface of the keel right now is very rough and it doesn't match the surface of the hull so I put uh, some special foil on the upper surface which will release epoxy and now I'm going to give a final clean to the keel surface then put some epoxy filler with different additives and then drop the hull and squeeze out the excess filler and once it's dried, I will lift the hull again and then I should have uh, two perfectly matching surfaces. It's chilly today, about 9 degrees Celsius. But fortunately, it was a bit warmer when I filled this um, Keel uh, hull joint with uh, epoxy. You can see a lot of it oozed out from the joint. So now I am going to remove this protective foil and then uh, grind a bit of this excess resin and then I will try to lift the hull again well guys some weeks have passed and um, I haven't made any update it was too busy reattaching the keel was so busy process that I didn't have time to film it but as you see, it's back in place. 
Uh, I'm still working on it because there appeared a slight pro problem when I started retalking the keel bolts. I found out that the bolts were too short and there were no washers under the bolts and, and the nuts just dug into the lead. Now I've put some washers, stainless washers under the, the nuts and, and it should prevent the nuts from digging in. I'm still working on it because this means I have to pull out the bolts to the inside and, and it's not an easy job. Here you can see how the nut has dug in into the lead. These bolts have not been removed yet. These are the ones which I'm working on right now. And these have been done. And I will replace the bolts because the threads are not so good anymore and I will put new bolts in as well. So this is how the bolt holes look inside the boat. As you can see, they are fairly oversized. This is because the, the keel bolts were angled at uh, different angles and I couldn't um, reattach the keel, otherwise uh, the only option I had was to, to make these holes larger. And when I reattached the keel, these uh, oversized holes were filled by Sikaflex, which I dug out now. And now the plan is, and now the plan is, I have made these um, little tubes which go around the bolt, and um, I will put the bolt into the hole and uh, drop this and drop this um, little tube in and then um, I can fill the surrounding with the glass fiber mix, resonant glass fiber mix. Please don't mind my welding. These bolts are not gonna be reused and this awesome welding was done to get bolts out because they were so stuck in lead. The bolts are a little bit bent, I think, and the lead prevented it from coming out directly, so I had to twist them out like this. Welcome back to the boat. I'm exhausted of this stuff. It's so much work. But who said it will be easy? No one. I knew it before. So nothing to complain. What I've done so far, most of the keel bolts have been replaced. Only the very first one and the very aftmost one have to be replaced, but I cannot do it right now because it's below zero degrees Celsius outside and uh, Sikaflex won't harden or, or cure at these temperatures. So I found another project meanwhile. I started disassembling the furniture to access the engine. The engine has to be removed. It needs a um, full overhaul because it uh, didn't start easily and it didn't work properly. So, one more job to tackle. Well, here you can see the missing keel bolt. And here are the new ones. Here are these cross members that are loose from lamination, which need to be replaced. I 
I'm heating with this electric heater. As I said, it's frosty outside. And, and so I already removed the countertop. And now I have removed most of the connections from the engine, electrical and water hose, only the exhaust has to be removed. And here you can see very poor workmanship. It's, it's iron, it's totally rusted. I'm happy that this boat got us over the sea as it is. Here you can see over the fuel tank goes the exhaust <laughs> and it's it's not fastened anyway. So, <laughs> the cockpit floor is supported by some vertical beams which are also loose. But the good thing is that when I get the engine out I have full access to, to the compartment back there and um, yeah, I can do it properly. The engine is coming out. The problem is that we didn't think about it, that our forklift, which is available, does not lift so high as needed. And therefore, we have to secure, meanwhile, the engine and... We and, uh, <laughs> and we have to do it in... Yeah, many stages. Okay, we'll continue. So, yesterday, we moved out the engine. It was pretty smooth. No drama. And now I'm removing the foundation of the engine. On top of these fiberglass, I don't know what to call them, let's say beams. On top of these, there were metal plates, just iron. And uh, one of them was in pretty decent shape still. It was eight mils thick and, and it still is eight mils thick. The other one is falling to pieces. And the main part is barely three or four mils thick. So it's just like, like paper. After an hour of cleaning, it's looking a bit better now. But again, something I found out, looking down these bolt holes, you can see there is water in there, in these engine foundations. So I think I will drill a hole in the lowest point to drain the water out. It's like minus four, five degrees Celsius outside. It's freezing, there is snow outside. And uh, I'm working on the boat. 
the engine is removed as well as the fuel tank the support of the fuel tank is visible there and the fuel tank itself is here it's approximately 35 liters of volume and it's nearly full uh, I also removed the part of the exhaust muffler and now I have access to the aft compartment there is a shelf built in there or uh, like a separate compartment and I don't understand what it is if it was a fuel tank maybe or Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go there and investigate let's go the exhaust looks pretty nasty you can see the compartment There is like an excess tube. There is like this plywood hedge, which I'm going to remove now. of some nasty stuff not full but the bottom is covered with some there is a like gasket material like a seal I suppose it was a built-in tank but uh, was it a waste tank or Was it a fuel tank? Who knows? Mm. 